This is DRF, Race of the Day. Hi, everybody. Mike Beer here with Friday's DRF Race of the Day. We're going down to Belmont Park for race number eight, entry-level allowance race for fillies and mares on the turf. Let's take a look at this uh, field real quick here. Um, field of seven entered for this allowance race. Note that number one, Halo City, is entered for main track only. So we'll have six horses on turf. As always, a quick reminder here that you can download free formulator past performances for this race on the DRF event page at drf.com. Um, again, the race of the day, Belmont race number eight. Um, it's They're going to go a mile and a quarter here on the inner turf course, this field of six. I feel like uh, overall a pretty well-matched field, especially among the uh, three shorter prices on the morning line. Um, you can see there that the number five uh, morning line favorite at nine to five is Kanakoi, a horse that um, recently shipped over here from uh, from Great Britain to race for trainer Graham Motion. Started out uh, at Aqueduct last month off the layoff for, uh, for a five-year-old debut. Um, maybe that race was just a little bit shorter than she wanted to go. I feel like she probably faced a better field than the one that she's facing in this spot on Friday, the winner of that race, Flighty Lady, was a Group 1 place horse over in France. She was also making her stateside debut that day for trainer Chad Brown. She was a very impressive winner of that race. That feel, that really looks like she has some better races in her future. Um, Khan McCoy, you know, she can really benefit, I think, from this stretch out in distance on Friday. She did win her final two starts over in England. Both of those... Um, we're on a synthetic track, but they were also both at a mile and a quarter. I feel like she was probably improving at the end of last year um, with this race uh, last month out of the way, stretching out in distance and doing so in a race without that much pace signed on as well could certainly work to her advantage. And speaking of the pace, let's take a look at the time form U.S. pace projector real quick, because as you can see here, um, time form U.S. doesn't find very much uh, speed in this race. And it's really hard to argue with that. Well, it'll be very interesting to see what tactics uh, some of these riders take in the race. Um, you can see the gray bar there, which uh, indicates that there is no speed to be found in this field. They do have uh, the aforementioned Kana Koi out there on the early lead. I can certainly see her being there. She showed pretty good tactical speed going shorter in that race off the layoff last month, sat right in behind the pace, got a clear shot at it in the stretch, wasn't nearly good enough to beat that field, but maybe things will be different this time, especially if she goes forward. They also have the number six, Wicked Amber, forward. Um, I'd be surprised to see her that close to the pace. Um, she is not really that kind of a horse, and she's going to be a big price in this race. Maybe they'll decide to, to try to go forward. I, I felt like a horse that you might um, see go forward in this race is a horse who is uh, not on that time form U.S. pace projector because the number two, La Dragon T, is a European import. So we don't have any pace data available for her. Uh, but just in going back and looking at some of her races overseas last year, she did show a couple of times, showed that she could be close to the pace, including in her only win over there. Um, let's uh, sort of run down this field real quickly um, in post position order, I guess. Again, the one is entered for main track only. So let's move to La Dragon T, who we were just talking about. Um, you know, it'll be interesting to see what she does in this race. I don't think that she um, appeared that she was untalented over in, in England last year. She came off of a layoff last June, going a, a long distance in the Oaks trial. She was a huge price that day at 80 to 1. And uh, to say that she outran her odds uh, would certainly be an understatement. She uh, made a pretty good run in the race. Now, that is a race that had a very strong pace going on. She sat back and saved ground all the way, but she did make a serious run at that thing through the stretch right up the inside. Basically got head and head with the horse on the lead there. Couldn't quite get by, got out finished at the end, settled for fourth, but all in all, that was a pretty good performance. Uh, she came back two starts later, back on the turf over this distance. She ran really well again, got another good trip in that race, but stayed closer to the pace. Again, made a run um, at the leaders in there, finally fought her way by the to the lead in the late stages and just got nailed on the wire in a 14 horse field. She ran well that day. And then of course she came back uh, two starts after that, again at a mile and a quarter, that race on synthetic, but she broke her maiden and she did it pretty impressively. I mean, it was a different kind of a race, but they got more aggressive with her early there, put her right on the front. She always traveled willingly in that race, won the race very easily. And that's the kind of race that sort of makes me feel like um, in a race like this, maybe they'll just come back fresh off the layoff. Joel Rosario taking over and try to put this horse on the lead. Um, there's really not a, a, a lot of pace for her to, to have to deal with. And here she has Lasix on. Um, it's you know the kind of race where I feel like she fits pretty well if she can take any kind of a step forward um, and is ready to go off the bench. I wouldn't totally discount her chances in here. Um, the number two, or the number three rather, is she throws heat. She's two to one on the morning line. I think she's a major player in this race for trainer Shug McGee. He's been going longer down at Gulfstream Park in her recent starts. Her last two starts are, are both longer distance races. I thought she ran well two starts back where they, you know, sort of took her back, let her sit. She was last 
all the way to the top of the stretch. And then she just sort of got going a little bit too late in there. Was making up ground at the end, never really threatened, but did get up for third. She came back in her most recent start back in March over a mile and a half. And let's take a look at the replay of that race right now. I thought this was a pretty um, strong performance from She Throws Heat, if only because, once again, she studied at the start. She wound up at the back of the pack early. But Jose Ortiz got way more aggressive with this, uh, with this filly in this race. And we're going to pick up the stretch run here where she's already made her run and you know, got up there to contest the pacer on the second turn. She does take over. The winner is going to come and nail her right at the wire after sitting an absolutely perfect trip, just waiting on hold. She throws heat, just went very early in that race to take the thing over. Actually ran right past the winner of the race up the backstretch, um, wound up contesting the pace for a long way. I thought she ran really well last time. It was probably unlucky to lose that race. Um, and now she's going to cut back a little bit in distance here. I don't think it's supposed to uh, really harm her, especially if she can show the kind of aggressiveness that she showed last time. The only other time in her career that she's run over Belmont turf, and it was also over this in her turf course, was off a layoff last October. And I realize it was a maiden claiming race, a high-priced maiden claiming race, though. And um, she just got the kind of trip that I think you don't really want to get going nine furlongs on Belmont's inner turf course that day. From the outside post, just sort of stuck four wide all the way around the racetrack there, but she did keep close to the pace. Um, she defeated that field very easily once she took things over. I felt like that was a step in the right direction, and I do think she's even gotten better since then. So I'm hoping that she could handle this shorter distance and maybe not get so far outrun this time. The four, um, Song of Innocence, Listen, this horse is going to be a price one turf start so far. That in her career debut at Monmouth going a mile last October. She did not run well. I think she didn't get a great trip either. Always stuck on the outside, but she really just didn't do any running. She's gotten a little better since then. Her figures have improved. She did break her maiden two starts back on the synthetic track at Turfway Park, but she's very slow on the way into this. Um, Jonathan Thomas has pretty good numbers going from synthetic to turf. Um, and this horse is going to be a price, so I'm not going to knock her, but she's going to have to take a step forward to win here. Kanakoi is the morning line favorite, as we've already talked about. I don't have a lot to add to what um, you know we've, we sort of already discussed with her. She ran fine last time, did get bumped at the start, but overall got a very good trip in that race. It was probably a better field than this one. She probably wants to go longer, and she could maybe just make her way to the early lead in here. All those things conspire to make her pretty tough in here, and maybe make her the horse to beat. I didn't love the fact that after getting such a good trip last time, um, not only was she no match for the one-two finishers, but outfinished pretty easily for third by Wicked Amber, who's back in this race. Wicked Amber was 50 to one that day. Doesn't really look like a contender in here, but Kanakoi has other things going for her. Um, I guess that makes her a contender. I'd be leery to take too short of a price on her. Wicked Amber um, is that long shot that we just discussed. She ran fine last time. I'm not going to knock her. They kept her going all through the winter on dirt. She's a better turf horse. Just two for 29 overall in her career. Um, but both of those uh, prior wins, and they did come in cheaper races, um, she was big prices both times. Uh, pulled off an upset break in her maiden at 10 to 1. Um, won uh, another race last September over two life claimers at nearly 25 to 1. She ran pretty well last time at uh, 50 to 1. So this horse is going to be a price in here. She's hard to make a convincing case for, but maybe you want to try and sneak her in there underneath. I guess that's certainly possible. Number seven is what does a shark say? This is a horse whose only career win so far came as a three-year-old that came over this Belmont inner turf course over this mile and a quarter distance. I thought she ran really well that day when she broke her maiden. And it felt like at that stage of the game, she was a filly who maybe had a little bit of potential to do better things. As it turns out, she really hasn't improved at all since that day. She did run twice over course and distance last summer. Um, two races where I guess she ran fine. I would say that she faced better fields than this one, to be sure. They put her on the lead. And both of those races, and it didn't really work out, settled for fourth the first time, settled for third the second time, never really threatened to win either of those races. But again, she was facing better horses in those spots. Um, she's a contender here. I, I don't really know what to say. In her last two starts, she has finished behind. She throws heat. I thought last time going a mile and a half, Paco Lopez gave her a really good trip and ride. She had a shot at it up the inside in the stretch, and she just wasn't good enough. It's sort of been the story of her life. Um, as someone who was, you know, once... Um, you know, pretty high on this horse and felt like she could be okay. She's totally lost me. I don't want her anymore, but she could be a price in this race. And as she already showed a couple of times last year, they could just go forward with her. Jose Lascano taking over the mount and just put her on the lead in this race. And that would not be a bad place to be. I couldn't talk myself into her. I didn't really want her. Um, but I don't think she's impossible in here by any stretch of the imagination. We can put the picks up there now. Um, you know, I don't really want Kanakoi, the morning line favorite, if she is indeed the favorite, um, especially. And I, again, I realize that she could do better in this race. Um, I want th she throws heat the number three on top. Again, I just feel like she ran really well last time and got unlucky not to win. 
And I'm just going to hope that she can handle this little cutback and distance and work out some kind of a trip in this race. Um, I put her over the uh, European import number two, La Dragon Teague, just because I feel like that horse, um, you know, as a newly turned four-year-old could take a step forward here. And she showed that she has some talent last year. And she also showed that if you get aggressive with her and, and go forward, she can handle that. She ran a, a pretty nice race break in her maiden. So I thought she was interesting off the layoff if she's ready. But I went 3-2 in Friday's DRF race of the day. It's the 8th at Belmont Park, an entry-level allowance for fillies and mares are going a mile and a quarter on the turf, the approximate post time, 4.40 Eastern time. Good luck.